Do knees in squats shrink your glutes? Check out this surprising new research. Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're unpacking a brand new study that looks at one of the most controversial squat variations out there, the knees turned in squat. Now, if you've spent any time around trainers, strength coaches, or powerlifting circles, you've probably heard them say that letting your knees cave in during a squat is bad news. And it's often labeled a sign of weak glutes, poor motor control, or even the setup for an injury. But here's the twist. Some biomechanics research and even real world examples from elite Olympic lifters suggest that this movement pattern might actually shift muscular loading in a way that favors hypertrophy in specific muscle groups, particularly the gluteus maximus. Did I mention that's my favorite muscle? <laughs> So the big question becomes, is knees in a sign of bad form? Or could it be a legitimate squat variation that alters how muscles like the glutes and the adductors are stimulated? Well, that's exactly what this new 2025 study set out to explore. The researchers compared both muscle growth and strength changes in folks who trained with either the knees in squat variation versus a more traditional knees out style, and the results might surprise you. So let's dig into the methods. What did these researchers find and what do they mean for your training? So let's start with some background. As many of you know, squats are one of the most effective compound multi-joint exercises used in resistance training programs for building lower body strength and muscle muscle, especially in the quads, the glutes, and to a certain extent, the hamstrings. But not all squats are created equal. Differences in foot stance, squat depth, the bar position, and yes, knee alignment can influence joint loading and can potentially change which muscles are being emphasized. One technique that gets a lot of attention and criticism is the so-called knees in squat. This refers to a movement pattern where the knees track more medially, sometimes even touching during the descent. Now, this is typically seen as poor form or a sign of weak glutes or poor hip control. But interestingly, in high level Olympic weightlifting, you'll sometimes see elite lifters display this exact pattern. Biomechanical modeling has suggested that the knees in squat variation might shift the load or demand towards the glutes while the knees facing out squats may emphasize the adductor muscles more. But until now, there hasn't been any direct experimental evidence that compares long-term training adaptations between these two movements. So with this in mind, this study set out to ask two questions. Does the alignment of your knees during squats affect how your hip muscles adapt, particularly the hypertrophy response of the glutes and the adductors? And number two, is one variation riskier than the other in terms of knee health and overall tolerance, especially in novice lifters? So what did the authors do? These researchers recruited 11 healthy young women with little to no barbell squat experience. The participants were then randomly assigned into one of two groups, the knees in group who were to rotate their thighs inward, intentionally bringing the knees closer together during the squat, and the knees out group who were cued to actively push their thighs outward, keeping their knees wider throughout the movement. Both groups trained for six weeks performing barbell back squats three times per week with full range of motion, using both progressive loading and undulating rep schemes. The only difference between the two groups was how they positioned their knees. To measure changes, the researchers used MRI scans before and after training to assess fat-free muscle volume across four different sites, the glutes, the adductors, the quads, and the hamstrings. Strength was assessed via a one rep max leg press and a three rep max back squat. And to monitor safety, they used a Coos questionnaire, which evaluates things like knee pain and function. So what did they find? First off, strength increased in both groups. The participants improved significantly on the leg press, and by the end of the study, they were back squatting close to their body weight for three reps, which in my opinion, isn't bad for beginners with minimal prior lifting experience. In terms of muscle growth, both groups showed clear increases in quadricep size, specifically the vastus lateralis, the medialis, and intermedius, with gains of about seven to 10%. Now, these results are consistent with what we typically expect from a six-week squat program. But when the researchers looked at the hip extensors, which are the glutes and the adductor muscles, 
things got a little more interesting. There was no significant growth seen in any of the adductor muscles or hamstring muscles. Now the gluteus maximus volume remained unchanged in the knees out group, but for the knees in group, so this is the group with knee vulgus, their glute volume actually decreased by about four or five percent, which was a statistically significant reduction. Now that last result is pretty surprising to me. Finally, when it came to knee health, there were no changes in the CU scores in either of the groups. Both knees in and knees out variations were tolerated well over the six week period with no reports of pain, dysfunction or injury risk. So what does this data mean for you? Well, first, let's try to make sense of these findings. The decrease in glute volume in the knees in group could mean a few different things. Firstly, it is possible that the glutes weren't being sufficiently loaded, so they began to atrophy slightly. This is contrary to the author's hypothesis that the knees would have greater glute max growth due to greater hip lateral rotator and smaller hip adductor net joint movements. Now, the author cited some earlier work that has suggested that untrained muscles may atrophy in an exercise program where more trained muscles increase in size. However, the idea of muscle competition generally lacks compelling data. In fact, some authors have written on this idea conceptually. Now, I kind of have to ask the question, do we really expect a muscle that has not been hypertrophied from previous resistance training to atrophy below baseline because you're training other muscle groups? This theory hasn't sold me, but it might seem slightly more plausible if the participants in this study were previously resistance trained. Now, another possibility that is equally, if not even more speculative, is the idea that the glutes may have actually been working harder during the knees in squat variation, leading to greater glycogen depletion and temporary water loss, which would show up as a reduced muscle volume on an MRI. Remember, each gram of glycogen is stored with several grams of water, so a depleted muscle could look smaller on an MRI, even with no protein tissue actually being lost. Interestingly, the researchers lean towards the second theory, that the knees in squat variation may actually be increasing glute demand, but not in a way that leads to short-term hypertrophy. So instead, they theorize that the muscle may be too fatigued or under-recovered to grow yet, particularly if the glutes were the bottleneck for load management during the early weeks. Now, I have to admit, this is a very creative rationale, but it may not be too likely, and here's why. Even when looking at glycogen depletion with intense bouts of cardio, it took participants in the study by Casey and colleagues a total of 195 minutes of continuous exercise to exhaustion to nearly deplete glycogen levels. However, in this extreme case, glycogen was more than completely recovered within 24 hours. It's also worth noting that six weeks might just not be long enough to see muscle growth adaptations for novice trainees, be it an artifact of the training program itself or just simply speaking to their ability to measure such small amounts of muscle growth using MRI technology. For individuals new to resistance training, early squat training likely emphasizes quad strength and motor coordination. So it is possible that once the loads get heavier with continued training, possibly near the end of the study, that the glute and adductors become more engaged or begin to see more growth. So with a longer training period, it's possible we might see different results and maybe even divergent hypertrophy patterns between the knees in and knees out groups. And please keep in mind that all of these interpretations are speculative and that there are some important limitations to keep in mind. First, this was a small sample size study with just 11 participants and only five in the knees out after one participant dropped out. While the statistical tests did show significance in some areas, a sample this small makes the results more vulnerable to noise and individual variation. This study didn't include a non-training control group, which means it's harder to interpret the glute volume loss with confidence. One has to ask, was it really a training-induced reduction or could it fall within the natural variability or error of MRI-based measurements? Without a baseline control group, we just can't say for certain. So while these findings are definitely provocative, suggesting that the knees in squat variation may impact the glutes differently, we should be cautious about drawing strong conclusions from this single randomized control trial. So what are my main takeaways? 
Well, both the knees in and knees out squats appeared to be safe and effective over six weeks in untrained female lifters. They improved strength and grew their quads with no signs of pain or any dysfunction. But when it comes to the glutes, the picture's less clear. The knees in group saw a small but significant decrease in glute volume, which could mean underuse during this particular movement or possibly overuse leading to glycogen depletion and water loss, depending on which hypothesis sounds more appealing to you. That said, this was a small, short six-week study without a control group, so we do need to be cautious. What this study does suggest is that knees in squats aren't inherently dangerous over short periods of time, and they may influence muscle loading in ways we don't fully understand yet, especially over longer training periods. The findings are certainly interesting, but they're not conclusive, and more research is needed to know for sure. So let me know what you guys think. Should knees in during squats still be corrected? Or is it time to rethink those training cues? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based training content, and share it with a training buddy who might find it interesting. And lastly, if you're looking for new evidence-based training programs or coaching to take your training to the next level, please visit my website by clicking the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.